All right, guys, it is an absolutely gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful spring morning in the end times in Paradise in Garfield, Texas. Oh, yeah, sounds like the party's beginning. Is it, is it Cinco de Mayo this Saturday? No, it is Saturday, April 28th, my Mexican neighbors are getting ready for the fiesta next week apparently testing the clueless fucking morons testing their fireworks uh anyway a great start to a clueless moron roundup rant here on saturday morning april 28th 2018 i hope we get to hear some more fireworks uh blasting off but anyway, since it is Saturday, I'm going to come do what I do every Saturday for today and next Saturday. The, this is the second to the last Clueless Moron Roundup rant you will hear on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And I want to thank Alert Tribe's member, member Christina uh, from over there in Spain sending me this article from Business Insider. I was going to do a separate rant on this, but I'm just going to lead off the clueless moron roundup rant. <clears throat> Bill Gates thinks a coming disease could kill 30 million people within six months and says we should prepare for it as we do for war. And so this is Business Insider weighing in on the, on the coming global pandemic. You know, all of this alarm being, being raised by uh, this, I don't know where <clears throat> Uncle Billy gets 30 million people over six months. But of course, what you will nowhere find in this story or anywhere uh, in any story like this on the mainstream media, 30 million people in six months, big fucking deal. Uh, I mean, we can only hope. Nowhere mentioned are you going to see that in four to five months, we will add 30 million people to this planet's population every four to five months. Uh, another 30 million people uh, it hit this. All it would do, uh, 30 million people being wiped out by a pandemic would not, there would still be a net gain of clueless fucking morons on the planet at the end of the six months. We are so fucked. Anyway, enough of Bill Gates. Uh, we're going to lead off, uh, obviously, the, the planet's number one clueless fucking moron, and that would be Donald Trump from Time Magazine. President Trump gives himself an A-plus grade for his first year in office in rambling Fox interview. Quote, I would give myself an A+. Plus. No one has been able to do what I am able to do. And I have done it despite the fact that I have a cloud hanging over my head that does not exist. <laughs> Uh, I, I could not say I've said it better myself, and perhaps it was that quote uh, leading to this, uh, many versions of this headline, Donald Trump deserves Nobel Peace Prize, says GOP Congressman. This is Representative Luke Messer, Republican from Indiana, is launching an effort to nominate President Donald Trump for the Nobel Peace Prize. Quoting Messer, we are seeing unprecedented progress toward peace 
and it is a direct result of President Trump's strong leadership. How many mistakes are in that one sentence? Uh, everything about that sentence is so fucking clueless, it would take me the rest of the day to dissect it, but uh, I think anyone listening to this has enough brains of their own. Okay, uh, <laughs> as I mentioned yesterday, uh, you know, the Washington Post just pulling out all the stops and its hatchet job against EPA Chief Spot, Scott Pruitt. Uh, so what is, what, what did uh, Pruitt have to say to lawmakers grilling him uh, uh, over complaints that involve Pruitt's $43,000 phone booth and a $90,000 trip to Italy. Pruitt, quote, I have nothing to hide. And you know, guys, the, you know, the more I think about it, uh, he doesn't have anything to hide. Uh, the, the guy is, is completely, uh, it's clear for the record, it's public record, uh, that this motherfucker is an absolute whore uh, of the global industrial economy and the fossil fuel industry and Monsanto and big ag and big chemical. Uh, he is he is a gift to the planet eaters. All right, from Scott Pruitt to uh, Ford Motor Company again. Uh, many versions of this article. Ford to stop selling every car. You know, like, when you think of car, when you think of a sedan, that's what they're talking about. Ford to stop selling every car in North America except the Mustang and the Focus Active, whatever the hell a Focus Active is, and take a wild guess why, uh, why Ford is pretty much eliminating every sedan except two models. Wow. Hmm, could it be that Ford sees 90%, 90% of its North America portfolio, this is probably China, in China too, in trucks, utilities, meaning SUVs and commercial vehicles. There you go. Citing a reduction in consumer demand for anything other than gas-sucking trucks and SUVs, uh, Ford in turn is not investing into the next generation sedans. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, this reduction in traditional cars is a long time coming. North America consumers have increasingly turned to crossovers, trucks, and SUVs over sedans and small cars. A trip to any parking lot will likely produce more evidence to this movement. And that's as true uh, in, in the Home Depot parking lot in Bastrop, Texas, as I showed yesterday, as, uh, as anything else. Uh, you know, these clueless fucking morons. I mean, I have no room to talk. Uh, I drive a truck. I mean, it's a Toyota four-cylinder truck. Uh, so it's not exactly a monster truck, uh, but I'm doing my part. Anyway, 
from Detroit to Chile. <clears throat> Chile court offers lifeline to controversial mine project. A Chilean court on Friday offered a lifeline to a controversial billion dollar mining project which had been put on hold over its location near a reserve which is home to a rare species of penguin. The project to build a huge open cast mine and seaport near the National Humboldt Penguin Reserve had been shut down last August by a ministerial panel over the risk it posed to the environment. There you go. But don't worry. In its latest decision, the court annulled the earlier decision and pretty much gave the green light to Andes Iron. Andes Iron, a Chilean company which wants to extract millions of tons of iron uh, in, next to a nature reserve uh, encompassing three islands which are home to 80% of the world's Humboldt penguins as well as sea lions and otters. Uh, environmentalists say it would sound the death knell for an area of Chile rich in natural resources which is known for its environmental diversity. The mine and the increased shipping traffic it would generate will do untold harm to a known whale migration route whose pristine waters provide a rich food source to several vulnerable species. All right, we've been having some controversy about The Guardian this week. Uh, I love this headline. All we need to do is read the headline and move on. The Guardian asking the question. I love it when they ask a question in a headline. Could sprinkling sand, could sprinkling sand save the Arctic's shrinking sea ice. We're just going to sprinkle sand to save the planet. From the Fox News Science Desk, the Fox News Science Desk, <clears throat> researchers can now keep a pig's brain alive outside of its body. From the Fox News desk, uh, back to the Guardian, <clears throat> Japan's renewable energy puzzle, solar push, threatens the environment. As Japan rushes to cut its carbon emissions by 26%, Environmentalists worry that forest and wildlife are being trampled. Hmm. Uh, anyway, but we're going just to zero in, and I can't remember, I'm sorry, was it Roy sent me these two articles side by side, but we don't need to go to Japan, we just need to go to New Jersey. <clears throat> Dismal land, destroying a forest to build a solar-powered amusement park. Six Flags Amusement Park wants to go green by replacing, otherwise known as bulldozing and obliterating off the face of the earth, 
an environmentally important woodland in New Jersey with a giant photovoltaic power plant. There you go. Uh, earlier this year, Six Flags announced a plan <clears throat> to build the world's first solar-powered amusement park, touting it as, quote, part of our ongoing commitment to conservation and eco-friendly initiatives, and said it would also, quote, enhance our role as good stewards of the environment. Yes. And there, but there is a sticking point. Six Flags wants to clear cut roughly 18,000 trees on 90 acres of the Pine Barrens ecosystem forest to make room for a solar farm. There you go. This is for all you enjoyers of uh, Six Flags Amusement Park. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the South China Sea, and I'm just going to read this headline, uh, and you try to figure it out. <clears throat> U.S. Air Force says trains in vicinity of South China Sea. Trains in vicinity of South China Sea. Guys, I don't know. Maybe it is worse than Hambone previously thought. I mean, I know that we have battleships and aircraft carriers and bombers and uh, thousands of uh, soldiers from all over the planet congregating in the South China Sea. But how the fuck do you get a train into the South China Sea. U.S. Air Force says trains in vicinity of South China Sea. There's some things I do, even I don't want to know about. <clears throat> I'll probably, I will get back to this more on Monday, but since I understand that about 10 people listen to my uh, economic meltdown roundup rant, just touch on it today from U.S. News and World Report. How investing can be good for the earth. Money may not grow on trees, but eco-friendly stocks could have investors seeing green in more ways than one. <clears throat> While many people celebrated Earth Day, by identifying ways to improve their own carbon footprint. <clears throat> warning, warning, bullshit alert. Uh, to protect and conserve the most valuable asset we have, the recent observance of Earth Day also presents an opportune time for investors to review their portfolio and invest in sustainable corporations. From U.S. News and World Report, back to The Guardian, asking the question, going down to sub-Saharan Africa, this is the Guardian visits uh, family planning in Niger. Uh, Niger, uh, I'm pretty sure Niger has the single highest birth rate on the planet. And asking the question, as so many people from Niger, what do you call people from Niger? If people from Ni Nigeria are Nigerians, what do you call people from Niger other than clueless 
fucking morons. Perhaps the single biggest clueless fucking morons and the Guardian asking the question that so many people from Niger are asking, why have four children when you could have seven? Let's get a quote from... With the world's highest birth rate, Niger's population <clears throat> is set to double in 17 years. So this is a 18-year-old mother, Rukaya Hamani, <clears throat> who already has three children. This is an 18-year-old girl has a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a 16-month-old. She had her first child when she was 11. <clears throat> this is the 18-year-old mother. I just pray to God to bless those three babies I already have. Maybe my in-laws would tell my husband to marry another woman to have more babies. If they want me to have another pregnancy, I can do it just for them to feel happy. And then they have a... Uh, a, a going uh, another link to the most viewed, the most viewed uh, Guardian article today in the United States, lynching memorial, lynching memorial in Alabama leaves some quietly seething, let sleeping dogs lie. Oh, God. Okay, from Niger and Alabama just to pretty much anywhere, the mainstream media letting you know 15 of the cheapest cars then that can hit 150 miles per hour. 150 miles per hour is plenty fast. Here are some ways to get there on a budget. Let's go down there to Venezuela. <clears throat> As water crisis bites, Venezuela governor outraged over his empty swimming pool. The chronic water shortage in Venezuela which has left millions struggling to cope, sparked fresh headlines this week after a state governor expressed outrage that his swimming pool was empty. Yes, this is Rafael Lacava. Quote, Here is my pool in the governor's house, and there is no water. There is no water. If by tomorrow evening I don't see any improvement, the Dracula mobile is coming for you. I'm warning you, he says menacingly, pointing at the camera. Yes. The 49-year-old governor is known for his eccentricity, which has seen him pushing a plan to keep the streets free of criminals with his customized Dracula mobile. DDD from uh, Venezuela back to the great state of Texas. This would be Houston, Texas. Police searching for woman who harassed staff 
and smashed windows at Popeye's Fried Chicken Restaurant. Houston police today are searching for a woman who caused quite a scene at a Popeye's restaurant after apparently being unhappy about her meal. From Houston, Texas to Zombie Island, why people, this is Time Magazine, looking into the unfathomable mystery of why people are so obsessed with the royals, the royal family, according to psychologists. By now, you likely know that Prince William and Kate Middleton had their third child, Louis, while joining his older siblings, George and Charlotte. You likely also know that Prince Harry is set to marry American actor Meghan Markle next month. Perhaps you even know that the royal wedding will be ha held at St. George's Chapel and will include a lemon and elderflower flavored cake and a teenage ch cellist. In short, the royals have infiltrated our collective consciousness. The question is, why? Well, just to answer the question, why is our collective consciousness as a planet has gone directly down the toilet. We are a collective consciousness of clueless fucking morons who are a hell of a lot more concerned about the name of the third royal baby than we are about the collapse and fall of a planet. I guarantee you there are a hell of a lot more people on this planet by a magnitude of 10 uh, who know uh, about the new royal baby than could define the word Anthropocene. We are in the middle of the Moranocene, which is why we are so fascinated with those the, the single biggest family of planet-eating fucking scumbags on the planet. Right next to that story, <clears throat> 18 pieces of Prince Harry and Meghan merch that will get you ready for the royal wedding. There you go. From the arrival of high-profile guests to the bridal procession and the star-studded reception, we are eagerly anticipating every aspect of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's royal extravaganza. And due to all of the commemorative merchandise available right now, it seems like we are not the only ones looking forward for the big day from mugs and plates decorated with the couple's engagement photo to masks, coloring books, and even cardboard cutouts. There is a plethora of special and unique memorabilia to celebrate Prince Harry and Meghan's nuptials. But our favorite piece of merch would have to be the adorable cupcake toppers. The adorable royal couple cupcake toppers. We are counting down the days until May 19th when we will be toasting them from across the pond. Shop all of the other Harry and Meghan items available 
on Amazon.com that we love in the gallery above. So I guess Amazon.com uh, has a special royal wedding gallery. Uh, I just heard from some Alert Tribes member where I can't remember which magazine it was. It might have been Business Insider. Just figured out that uh, that Jeff Bezos makes two hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars per minute. Every minute of every hour of every day, uh, this motherfucker is making two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars per minute. Okay, from the royal couple to Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio's latest venture seeks to bring rural dwellers out of the dark. And this is the mainstream media. This is Mashable, uh, who I have some respect for, uh, cheering on uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, you saved the planet, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, for uh, investing and in promoting the, this company to electrify millions and millions of uh, basically peasants in Latin America and Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, you know, with their rooftop solar, so they, too, can uh, buy all of this planet-eating shit. You know, that does, the, 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 you know, a, a, a big-screen TV uh, means nothing if you have nowhere to plug it in. But thank you, Leonardo DiCaprio, for doing all you can to bring big-screen TVs and air conditioners and refrigerators and blenders to millions and millions and millions of new clueless fucking morons. You know, and why should they be left in the dark? From Leonardo DiCaprio to Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby lashes out and calls prosecutor an asshole after jury finds him guilty as charged of indecent assault. Hallelujah. Finally, uh, the U.S. justice system doing its job and uh, finding that fucking racist, that racist uh, rapist. I love it. Is there one... One, uh, I just noticed that racist and rapist are, uh, have one letter different. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love this. Uh, <clears throat> Cosby stared straight ahead as the verdict was read, but moments later lashed out loudly at DA Kevin Steele after the prosecutor demanded the former TV star be sent immediately to jail. Steele told the judge Cosby has a plane and might flee. Cosby shouted at Steele, quote, He doesn't have a plane, you asshole. <laughs> Oh, God. From Bill Cosby to Kanye West. Kanye West dragon energy tweet scorches his popularity among fans. Uh, Donald Trump thanked Kanye West on Friday for having, quote, performed a great service to the black community by praising the president on Twitter. But 
West's recent tweets saying that he loved Donald Trump like a brother because they both shared the same dragon energy went too far even for some of his most ardent fans. There you go. Uh, this is fan, it's an anonymous female fan. We can't support people, meaning we, black people can't support people who are working against us and here we are throwing money at him. We need to support people who support us and not be so ignorant. What was the famous tweet from Kanye West? Quote, you don't have to agree with Trump, but the mob can't make me not love him. We are both dragon energy. He is my brother. I love everyone. From Conway, Kanye West to ABBA. I don't know if anybody under the age of 50 even would know who the fuck ABBA is. Here we go again. ABBA to release new music after four, after more than 35 years. Gimme, gimme, gimme an ABBA reunion after more than 35 years. Oh, from ABBA to Black China. Black China slammed for one-year-old daughter's clip-on pink hair extensions. But we're going, your old clueless fucking moron is going to wind up uh, this week's edition of my clueless moron roundup rant with someone I have never heard of in my entire life. I am proud to say I have never heard the name Janelle Monet, M-O-N-A-E, Janelle Monet, says she is pansexual and web searches sore. I'm trying to figure out how you have sex with a pan. I guess a female has a uh, could have sex with at least a pan handle. Uh, I, I don't know how men could be pansexuals. I guess only women can be pansexuals. This is a singer. The singer Janelle Monet has described herself as pansexual, sending searchers for the term soaring on Thursday. Uh, she, she's told Rolling Stone that she initially considered herself bisexual, quote, but then later I read about pansexuality and was like, oh, these are things I identify with too. I am open to learning more about who I am, she told the magazine. Uh, Google showed, showed that pansexual, pansexual definition and Janelle Monet or Monet were among its top five searches on Thursday. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary uh, said that online searches Thursday went up 11,000% uh, for pansexual, which it defines as, quote, characterized by sexual desire or attraction that is not limited to people. 
of a particular gender identity or sexual orientation, closed quote. Uh, Monet is not the first pop singer to embrace the term. Miley Cyrus uh, has also identified herself as pansexual. In the Rolling Stone interview, uh, Monet also described herself as a, quote, free ass motherfucker. A free ass motherfucker. These are, are the heroes of the latest generation, the Tinder swiping uh, generation uh, we are leaving to save this culture and this planet. The free ass motherfucker generation. And with that, I am going to wrap up uh, this week's <clears throat> uh, Clueless Moron Roundup rant and get down on my belly to uh, slide under my house with a fucking hacksaw to, uh, to slice my kitchen drain pipe and reroute it out to my... Uh, out to my spider lilies. That's what I get to look forward to on this beautiful day in the end times. Bye guys.